Hello and welcome back. In the previous series of videos, we went over the frequency response of continuous time systems. In this video playlist, we're going to go over the frequency response of discrete time systems. And we're going to pay special attention to FIR filters, finite impulse response filters. So with that, let's get started. In terms of our overall introduction, Keep in mind that the frequency response this is how the system responds to sinusoids of different frequencies. Okay? The idea is we want to obtain a function that will tell us how the amplitude and the phase of those sinusoids will change as they go through the LTI system. So the frequency response of a system equals the Fourier transform of what? Of the impulse response. Which Fourier transform? Well, it depends. For continuous time systems, we will use the continuous time Fourier transform. For discrete time systems, we will use the discrete time Fourier transform. So again, what we are trying to do here, let's think a little bit about the big picture. If we have an LTI system, linear time invariant, we know a couple of things. We know that because the sinusoids are the eigenfunctions of LTI systems, if we put a sinusoid in, I'm going to call this the frequency of the input, it has an amplitude. Um, <clears throat> what are we going to get out? Well, we're going to get a sinusoid of the same frequency. So the form was unchanged. You put a sinusoid in, you get a sinusoid out, right? What's going to change, and you can have this amplitude, what's going to change is the amplitude and the phase, and it's going to change by the frequency response. We saw continuous time h of j omega. Let me actually this was the frequency response, if you recall. Now this h of j omega has a magnitude and a phase, so it's affecting the amplitude and the phase. And in this case, if we have a particular frequency, you just evaluate it at a particular frequency. But the frequency response tells you, as a function of any frequency, so for any sinusoid, what is going to be the change in amplitude and in phase. So is this LTI system going to behave as a low-pass filter, a high-pass filter? A band pass filter, a band stop filter, tells you exactly as a function of frequency what frequencies are going to go through, which frequencies are going to be attenuated, and how the phases are going to change. Right? Now look at how important this, this is. Once you know the frequency response, you know how the system is going to affect any sinusoidal signal. But then by extension, because most signals can be expressed as sum of sinusoids, you know how the system is going to affect all signals. So remember, if we have a signal here, this signal, this amplitude, I'm going to say AK, this is NK, and we add them together. So we are expressing a signal as a sum of sinusoids. And what's going to happen here? It's a linear system. It obeys the principle of superposition. So you're going to have here a sum at each one of those frequencies. Right? So this is what the frequency response tells you. What, how the system is going to affect any sinusoid the amplitude and the phase, and by extension, any signal, because the signals can be expressed as sum of sinusoids, and these are linear systems. Now, this is the framework. 
in continuous time that we saw in terms of review, right? Now, now we're going to go to discrete time. So what we are doing here, let me just get some space. What we said here that the frequency response is the Fourier transform of the impulse response, meaning the output of the system. I'm going to put here output of system for impulse input. So we have if we have an LTI system in continuous time. We saw if we put a Dirac delta impulse in, this is the add the input. Of course, in discrete time, what we are doing is the unit impulse. So zero, zero, one. This is perfectly well defined. Zero, zero. So we put an impulse and we measure what happens at the output, right? So in continuous time, this is the impulse response. And that may be. A decay exponential, a decay in sinusoid, whatever it is, we don't know that as h of t in continuous time. Or so, by the way, here h of t t is going to be our continuous time variable and our discrete time variable. So delta n, or in discrete time, we may have something. Well, the same thing, right? I'm going to express it as sequence h of n. Remember t is a real number in continuous time. In between two time points you have an infinite an <clears throat> amount of numbers. n is discrete. It's an integer. It just gives you the sample order, the location of that sample. So this is the impulse response, right? The impulse response is the output. We are talking about the output. Do not confuse it with the impulse function. Okay? You put the impulse function at the input, you measure and you obtain the output, okay? and that may be in continuous time, will be the Dirac delta input. In this case, time is the unit uh, impulse, so well defined. Uh, it's just a signal that is zeros everywhere except at a point. Uh, well, it is equal to one. You measure the impulse response, and now that impulse response is a complete characterization of LTI systems. So we mentioned in a previous lecture that with impulse response we could cal calculate the output for any other input. We could assess whether the system was stable. Uh, we will look, we could assess the um, causality, and we can look at the frequency response. Okay. So you have the impulse response, you take the Fourier transform, and with that, you get the frequency response. Now, a key idea here is, is that when you are sending an impulse at the input, you are sending all frequencies. Remember, the Fourier transform of the impulse had an infinite amount of frequencies, and they were all equally represented. Remember this Fourier transform pair? This is at the input, x of t, your frequency response, and this is what was a, a result from continuous time, but we can apply all of those. It was a flat a spectral line. So you had all the frequencies represented here, and that's why effectively when you are sending the signal, you are sending all possible sinusoids, and all possible sinusoids of all amplitudes represented. And so when you look at then the response of the output, the, the, the Fourier transform of the impulse response, if this was the input spectrum, effectively, when you look at the spectrum of the output, if it does something like that, say a low pass filter, anything that was cat, 
here that was cut by the system, right? Okay. So conceptually, this is what we are talking about. The frequency response is the Fourier transform of the impulse response. This is applicable in continuous time, where you put a Dirac delta input. In this case, we, are, we can only talk about the area being one, you find, or a unit impulse at the input in discrete time. This is continuous time, discrete time. You measure or you calculate the output, take the Fourier transform, and it gives you the frequency response. Now, the frequency response, remember, it is extremely useful because it tells you what the system does for all sinusoids individually or combination of those sinuses when you when you sum them together because linearity in the LTI means it obeys the principle of superposition. So not only we know what the system will do to any sinusoid in terms of modifying the amplitude and the phase, but we also know what it will do for any other signal since it can be expressed signals of interest as sum of sinusoids for the purpose. Okay, in the next video, we're going to take these concepts and put some mathematics behind them so we see the actual transforms. Thank you.